welcome to the Aussie Roll Call Podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm Dan. And I'm Stevie. And we're your hosts. The Aussie Roll Call Podcast is all about the TTRPG scene in Australia. We'll be bringing you interviews with new and emerging creators and innovators in the tabletop role-playing game space right here in Australia. Now, when we say tabletop role-play, we're not just talking about actual plays like you might see on streams or uh, listen to in other podcast forms. We're talking about all the artists, the creators, the writers of these games, as well as people who create music and additional resources for people who run their own home games as well. But what about us? Who the heck are we? Who are we, these people who will be talking about all of these things and interviewing lots of wonderful people along the way? Well, as I said, I'm Kate, Kate O'Sullivan. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. You might know me from some of the TTRPG actual plays that I'm a part of, both in podcast and streamed forms, or the mildly chaotic TTRPG panels that I've been involved in at events like PAX Australia. What about you, Dan? Yep, so I'm Dan Machuka. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a game therapist. I'm a primary school teacher. And like Kane, I'm also a streamer uh, online and in podcast and on YouTube as well. And I'm Stevie Schaefer. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a professional game master, author of several one shots, and I'm the founder of the Melbourne queer TTRPG community. Every week, we're going to come at you with our guests and give you a fast five uh, set of questions to get a bit more of the sort of fun stuff, not just the this is what I do and these are the important things in my TTRPG space. So my first question to my fellow hosts is what is the very best gaming table snack? Uh, for me, uh, it is popcorn because it is filling. It's great when it's hot, but it's also not that bad when it's cold. And it doesn't leave a sticky residue all over my fingers, which is important so that my dice don't end up covered in sticky, weird stuff. What about you, Stevie? It's got to be chips. Uh, salt and vinegar chips are my favourite. Um, I especially love when you get that burn after you've eaten too many of them because your tongue is being dissolved by the citric acid. Because, you know, I came to the table to feel something. I'm not being picky about whether that's something about the game or the snacks. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Dan? What's your snack of choice? Now, for me, it's absolutely mixed M&Ms. You know, they come in the green bag. You don't know what you're going to get until you shove it in your gob. You know, the whole point of role-playing games is that it's completely random. You have no idea as a DM what your players are going to throw at you and as a player what your dice are going to make you do. So why not throw some randomness into your snack as well? All right. Well, speaking of dice, what is your favorite dice? My favorite dice I have is a giant chunky D20 that I got thanks to some lovely, lovely friends of mine that occasionally steers me wrong, but in the right moments, the chaos it brings is wonderful. As for my favorite size of dice, because I think that's important too, I'm a fan of a D6 because they're readily accessible. Anyone can get a hold of them, which means they can play a whole bunch of different TTRPGs as well as simple board games that I grew up with. So it's got to be a D6 and you can sit on them. And they're not going to hurt you. <laughs> what about you, Dan? What's your what about dice? Dice for you? So for me, I've got a, a set of giant chunky dice, like the full seven set. Um, I just love to pull it out in person because you know my players are rolling their piddling standard size dice. We're fighting a boss, and out come my big chunks, bam, on the table with a terrifying funk. I'm also like you. I also love the D6 um, in terms of the particular sizes, just because you can just pull them out anywhere. There's a whole bunch of games that just use piles of them. So, and you, um, and yeah, they're just kind of easy and versatile in that sense. So my favorite specific dice is a Rainbow D20. I believe I bought it from Roll With Advantage. And it kept rolling so high during one game that my players actually banned me from continuing to use it because otherwise they were gonna, they were going to die. So it's it's by far my favorite, and I pull it out when I feel like I have to roll well. But my favorite size of dice, I think, is probably the D12 because it's such a weird, goofy little guy. It's just such an odd shape. It doesn't get a whole lot of love, and it's kind of it looks like a, a squarer version of a soccer ball, um, and I just find that that endearing. Yeah. Everyone's got to love a different dice, and we'll, I'm sure we'll find some more as we go along through this podcast of people who are pro or con different dice of different points. But we use these dice to do something. We use them to play games, so there's many different ones to play. Dan, what's your favourite game to introduce new players to? Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of a system called 2400. Um, it comes in a whole bunch of different sci-fi and one fantasy, fantasy settings, but it's also, you can find them anywhere. Um, it's really easy to pick up and play, especially for a bunch of newcomers. You can just describe, here's the setting. We're doing Fallout today, for example. 
And here's the rule set that, that aligns with that. And off you go with a set of polyhedral dice. I like often introducing new people to like micro games, particularly strange games are really fun. But recently I've been loving Tiny Dungeon, which is a sort of a very simplified fantasy role-playing game. Been using it to play with kids, very simple to pick up, but the extensive trait system gives it a surprising amount of depth for a light little system. So yeah, that's been good, but it does change from day to day, so... Oh yeah, I think I think depending on what day you ask me will depend on what I say. But uh, for me, I think at the moment it's um, the kids on bikes system. So there's a few different like versions of it: teens in space, kids on brooms, and they're about to come out with kids in capes. Um, and I think it's great because the it's really archetypical. It plays into a lot of archetypes, so people kind of know what they're doing. Again, like you both said, it doesn't require a lot of front loading for a newcomer. You're like, yeah, you're the jock in a 1980s like stranger things setting and they're like oh i know exactly who that is okay cool i can i can do that uh, which i really like for for a system but tabletop must-haves you're sitting down you're about to play what has to be with you other than you know your dice and your snack of choice obviously so for me it's a set of 3d printed flat minis that i have um they're really convenient they come in a little uh, case that's about the size of, of an iphone um but it includes like about two dozen la- small like to medium sized minis as well as half a dozen large sized ones. And um, yeah, just kind of letting players choose which which little icon they want to represent themselves and uh, have a little str- strategic scenario is so much fun and so easy. I recently purchased a portable Bluetooth speaker just so I could like play ambient music wherever I am. It's probably not an essential, but I just think that having music and soundscapes just adds so much ambience um, to the tabletop experience that I can't help myself. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, I think I'm I'm a note taker, so good good notebooks, good note and a good pen. Nothing. That, People are all about the notebooks. You've got to have a good pen too. Otherwise, it's it's all going to go downhill very, very quickly. That's my my advice. Make sure you're writing down what you've picked up along the way, players. Final question. We know that in a lot of different tabletop games, people get to have little companions that run around with them. Not your fellow players, but like your weird little robot or your little fuzzy pet. If you could have a companion or a little minion animal or a little robot, what would it be? Dan? So I've currently got a little robot companion in a sci-fi game, a sci-fi sci-fi game that I'm in. And he's just, I just kind of imagine being like that, uh, I can't believe I have to push butter robot from um, Rick and Morty. So I just, I'd love to have something like that, something sentient enough that I can just tell it verbally what it does and it doesn't want to ask too many questions, otherwise it'd have an existential crisis. <laughs> Poor little existential crisis. Uh, what about you, Stevie? Similarly to Dan, mine's also robotic-esque in nature. So I sometimes throw in as like a little friendly NPC, this uh, little bronze automaton that has wings and it's spherical and it has a uh, like a liquid magic display. But the only thing that it shows on its face is like emojis. So just like imagine like pixel emoji art. That's the only way it can communicate. Uh, his name is Brutus and I love him so much that, yeah, I think I think I would want him IRL. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take one, please. Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll do something different then. If we've gone kind of robots for the two of you, I'd probably take like an, I don't want to be the cliche wizard, uh, but like an owl or a bird, something, but not so much because I want it to like be cool and look cool sitting on a shelf and bring me mail, but more so it can literally carry stuff for me because I am the one with the heavy bag. Like I, someone hold the wallet so that I don't have to dig and my keys so I don't have to dig around through my giant non bag of holding. To- Sounds like you want a flying monkey. I don't, I think. With my height, I'd end up looking like the Wicked Witch of the West if I had a flying monkey. <laughs> uh, but I'm, like, I'm obsessed with the little robot guys. I think they're great. <laughs> now that you know a little bit more about the three of us, your hosts will get to know a bit more about a lot of the Australian roleplay community as the podcast goes along. We look forward to bringing you interviews, news, and way more from the Australian tabletop role-playing scene. And we're really grateful that the Australian roleplay community have backed us in putting this podcast together so that we can talk about all the things that the community itself really, really loves. I'm sure you'll hear us wax on and wax lyrical for time to come. But for now, we'll leave it at that. And there's just one last thing to say. Keep on rolling. This podcast is produced in affiliation with the Australian roleplay community. Your hosts have been Kato Sullivan, Dan Machuka, and Stevie Schaefer. 
cover art by Helen Graham of Dewymon Studios. Title music is Sweet Sunday Groove by Slailkey. Production by Stevie Schaefer.